In this video, we'll talk about how to configure your settings to optimize and get the most out of your WordPress site. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this video, so if you're ready, let's dig in. The General Settings panel controls the most basic configuration settings for your site, like your site's title, tagline, and web address. The Admin Email Address is where WordPress will send automated email notifications for things like new user registration notices. Choose whether or not you want your site open to registration. And if you do choose to enable open registration, then specify the default role for these new members. It's a good idea to set this to Subscriber, since subscribers can read, but not publish or edit content on your blog. Next, select your time zone the format in which dates and times will be displayed throughout your site, and set your preference for the week starting day. Be sure to save your changes. The Writing subpanel controls the edit interface you use to write new posts and pages. These formatting options will convert typed emoticons into graphics and correct simple HTML errors. Choose a default category for new posts when no other category is selected, and a default post format. We covered the Press This Bookmarklet in detail in the previous video, but you can also post directly to your WordPress site via email. Simply enter the email account details here, and WordPress will periodically check for new messages sent to this address. The subject line of your email will become the post title, and the body your actual post content. It's a good idea to make this a fairly secure email address since any messages received at this address will become new posts on your site. WordPress even generates a few random strings you can use for more secure email addresses if you like. You can also specify a different default category for any posts submitted via email. And last, when you publish a new post, WordPress automatically sends out a notification to a site update service which in turn alerts search engines to your new content. This helps ensure your new content gets indexed more quickly. You can add additional notification services here if you like. There are only a few settings in the Reading subpanel, but they're very important. You can decide whether you'd like your front page to display your latest blog posts or one of your static pages instead. We covered this in depth in an earlier video, but if you select a static page, then you're able to pick which of your pages you want to serve as your home page, and then which one you wish to serve as your blog page. This is particularly useful if you're using WordPress to build a business site, or another type of site where you'd like the home page to show some static content to your site visitors, rather than just a list of your blog posts. When you choose this method, you can use another page as your blog archive, and all your blog posts will appear on that page. You can also choose how many posts will appear on your blog pages at one time, and how many posts will show in your RSS feed. You can choose to show the complete text of your articles in your RSS feed, or just a summary requiring folks to visit your site to read the rest of the article. And last, choose whether or not you'd like your site to be visible to search engines like Google, Bing, and others. You'll remember that we covered the discussion subpanel in detail during the earlier video on managing comments. So for now, we'll move on to the media subpanel, which allows you to set the maximum dimensions in pixels that WordPress will use when creating the various versions of uploaded images, including the thumbnail, medium sized image, and large image. I typically choose to organize my uploads into month and year-based folders, which makes it easier to find images that I previously uploaded. And finally, let's talk about permalinks. Now this can be a confusing topic, but basically permalink settings simply determine the format of the URLs or web addresses for your pages and posts. By default, WordPress creates URLs that contain a question mark followed by lots of numbers. But you can, and should, use more friendly URLs that are also better optimized for search engines. Most SEO experts agree that the best format is simply the post name by itself. But if you want more detailed information about permalinks, you might check out the dedicated video tutorial we created on just this topic.
The default values for category and tag base are usually fine in most cases, but feel free to experiment with these, looking at how these values change the URLs for your categories and tag archive pages. So we've now covered all the major functions and features of WordPress, and you should be fairly comfortable creating and managing your own blog or site content. But for more screencasts and training videos, be sure and check back with us from time to time. And good luck with your new WordPress website.